Amen. Yeah, we can can start now. We usually just give a little welcome um, and then we kick it over to you. So I think we can go ahead and start. Okay. Amen. Uh, well, uh, I always want to um, repeat this first that I don't consider these strictly as um, as you know presenting a message in that kind of way. Uh, really, um, okay, I'm in the meeting, okay. All right, okay, all right, okay, good night, bye. Okay, um, um, but, uh, okay, um, but as a kind of a, more a free talk that is uh, um, something of a current burden that is in my heart, and so I speak freely without an outline and that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> uh, since this uh, recent uh, itero or hidro um, in these uh, elders and responsible ones training, um, because of the one of the messages assigned to me, and that would be message number six, some of the brothers in this room here have heard that message. Um, I have been very, very much arrested by part of this, well, the whole message really. Um, uh, but in particular, one matter. Now, um, the, the, the three things cover in this message, and I'm certainly not getting into these things, uh, but they're all uh, from chapter three and four in the book of Colossians. Um, number one, it concerns letting the peace of Christ arbitrate in our hearts. Number two, that's where my burden is nowadays. It's almost in whatever I cover, I cannot help but talk about this. And that is another let. This is letting the word of Christ dwell in us richly. And finally, uh, in chapter four um, uh, of Colossians, there's this matter of persevering in prayer. So these three things um, are needed for uh, a genuine church life today. Now, the point about letting the word of Christ dwell in us richly is very, very um heavy within me. And um, so tonight, uh, in a free way, I want to just uh, talk about this. <clears throat> um, in Ephesians chapter 3, Paul's second uh, great prayer in that book, uh, he prayed uh, that we would be strengthened into uh, our inner man according to his riches, um, uh, the riches of his glory, and uh, by his spirit, um, that eventually Christ would make home in our hearts, and that, that eventually we will be filled unto the fullness of God. So uh, there you have this very, very... Um, important matter in terms of our experience of Christ today, and that is that Christ would make home in our hearts. Well, here you have in Colossians 3.16 about letting the word of Christ dwell in you or inhabit you richly. I think you can pick up the parallel. Um, you have the person of Christ dwelling in our hearts. Uh, and here you have the word of that person, the word of Christ dwelling in us in a rich way. So you can even right away uh, draw a conclusion, and that is uh, Christ, the way that Christ would make home in our hearts is when his word 
when his word, the word of Christ, dwell in us. I think that's logical, right? Uh, and it's practical. So today, when we say, uh, oh Lord, make home in my heart. Well, practically, what does that translate into? That translated into simply, oh Lord, may your word, your word or your words uh, have a place uh, in us. Um, your word uh, can inhabit me, can um, uh, live in me uh, as 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 its home. And uh, the word would reside and abide and remain uh, in me. Um, in other words, that my inner being, which is mainly our heart, with all of the inward parts that are parts of our heart. Uh, this is... Uh, of course, our conscience, and for sure, our mind, our emotion, and our will um, that comprise the heart, these inward parts, uh, would be indwelt by this word. And, um, and uh, so, so, this thought of the word dwelling in us uh, is actually very much uh, in the New Testament. May I even say in the Old Testament, if you uh, read it in a New Testament way, that um, um, God has given his word to us um, um, that eventually that word would um, find home, would, would, uh, would dwell within our being. Um, there's a word uh, in, uh, I think, in, let me see here, in, in John, uh, where in John chapter 8, Gospel, uh, the Lord said, you know, speaking to these Jewish people, these uh, um, opposers, right? Uh, I know these are all Jews. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me. <laughs> you know, these Pharisees, these scribes. Um, and it says this, because... My word has no place in you. So these are people who know the scriptures. These are people who study the scriptures. These are people who are day and night involving themselves with the, uh, uh, the law, you know, the law of Moses. And, and they handle the word. They search the scriptures. You know, that's what make them scribes and Pharisees and so on. Um, but yet these people seek to kill Jesus because the, that word that they study, that word that they search, has no place in them. No place in them. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, I am concerned uh, that we today have the word of God, no longer just the Mosaic law and the Old Testament. Today, we have the words of Jesus, the word of Christ, that the Lord personally spoke, mainly in the Gospels. And we have his extended speaking is still, you know, in the New Testament, God speaks in the Son. And so that Son is not only the firstborn son, but eventually the many begotten sons as part of that one sonship. And so today, 
the speaking speaking of Christ, uh, besides his own speaking while he was on earth, uh, um, after his uh, death and resurrection, um, uh, the apostles, uh, the um, uh, prophets in the New Testament continue to speak. And um, you can say that uh, all that uh, speaking are part of the word of Christ. And so really the whole Bible, you can say, is the word of Christ. And um, uh, we can, you can uh, have this word and you can uh, study this word and you can read this word and even you can study this word. Um, but this word may not necessarily have a place in you or me. And so um, here is the burden. Here is the burden. Um, you know, these days we are very much promoting reading the recovery version, reading the life studies, you know, and, and I'm burdened to the uttermost. Uh, this uh, 500 uh, life study app that came out, uh, it is quite encouraging because as of today, there are over 20,000 subscribers. Many of them are users. In other words, they actually schedule their Bible reading and this and that. Um, and uh, the both the Chinese version of that and the Spanish version of that to start with is in the works. I hope that by summertime, these other versions will come out and there would actually be a version 2.0 of the English version that I have launched. Now, all this is to facilitate, to help the brothers and sisters get into the life studies. Um, so that is good and, and we're very burdened and the Lord knows uh, uh, I feel these days there need to be a fresh return, if you will, to the Word of God, to the Word of God, to the Bible, uh, to the uh, written Word of God, um, and um, uh, just to and the interpreted of Word of God in these days. Uh, in the Lord's recovery throughout the whole earth. Um, there needs to be a fresh returning to the word. Um, and I'm really, I, I feel I, we cannot uh, take this for granted. Like, I'm not so sure. I don't have the assurance at all that many saints today uh, are in the word. They're in the church life, they're, you know, in the Lord's recovery. But I'm just concerned that they are really not so much in the word on a daily basis. But here, the burden is a step further. It's not just that we have the word, we have the books, we have the app, we have the things in our phone and, and all, all of this, uh, not even that you would, you know, schedule, you will start reading this, which is absolutely necessary. But I go further, and that is how much of this word of Christ, all this is the word of Christ, is inhabiting our being. It, it is, 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 um, it is in indwelling our inward parts, part by part. Um, how much room have you and I given to the word of Christ? How much this word of Christ is really 
livingly operating in your life. That's a different story. That's a different thing. Um, you know, you can go to the Bible school and seminary, and every day you have to read the Bible, you have to read all these books and what have you, you have to study Greek, you have to, you know what I mean, you have to get into all those things. You can do that, and I'm not saying that's bad. But the question is, how much is that word inhabiting your insides, your heart, your inner being? That is a different thing. And I submit that it is because of the lack of this inhabiting word, the lack of the word really finding uh, a place in our hearts, the lack of the, uh, the word not having place in us. That is really the cause of most of our problems in our Christian life and in our church life today. Um, um, I'm very, very burdened about this, very burdened about this. Um, you know, the word of Christ we know is, um, is, is, is full of functionalities, uh, full of function. I have here an outline created uh, along this line of burden right here. And I don't have the time just right here, 24 major functions of the word of God. All right. 24. There, there probably is more. You know, I mean, let me just say a few, right? Uh, the function uh, of the word uh, is to make us wise unto salvation, right? You, you all know this. The word is a word uh, that, call, that can cause us to be not only regenerated, but it is a seed. You know, this is in Peter. Um, that can uh, grow in us uh, um, um, and then you know it, it, it's a it's the, it's a word that grows in us uh, you think uh, Matthew 13 you know the parable there I'm gonna get to that in a moment the word is milk right the our, our, the the, the uh, pure milk of the word for our uh, drinking and for our growth. The word is the bread of life. I mean, this is, we all know this. Um, the, the word is food. You know, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds at, that out of the mouth of God. Um, the word uh, is what completes a believer. Uh, that means that perfects a believer, that equips and furnishes a believer. And that is in Timothy, you know, the, the, um, uh, the God-breathed scripture that can perfect a man of God. The word of God, needless to say, give us light. You know, the entrance of the word gives light. It's a lamp to our feet and so on and so forth. And the word of God, no doubt, ministers life to us life to us. <clears throat> the Lord, word of God rejoices our, uh, uh, is, uh, uh, restores our soul and, and, and uh, give us joy in our hearts. Um, I, 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 th there, there are many more brothers and sisters. Uh, there's so, so many things that the word does. Uh, the word keeps us from sinning. You remember that? Um, <clears throat> Um, and many of these verses are in, in Psalms. Um, um, the word upholds us, the word strengthens us, the word keeps us, the word sanctifies us, the word separates us and cleanses us um, uh, dispositionally. 
um, the word is a sword, two-edged sword that separates soul from spirit and, uh, and is a discerner of our thoughts and intents. Um, the word builds us up. The word edifies. Um, okay, all right. I mean, this word is just abundant in its function, in its positive functions. But the, the thing is, look at our lives. How much are all these functionalities operative or really working, really uh, doing things, um, uh, affecting us in all these kind of ways? Um, then you say, oh, how, how, how does that happen? How does this rich word of God function and operates in us uh, to, to, to minister all these things, to, to, to operate uh, uh, in a strong way uh, to, so that we can gain the profit of all, all, all that the word, word does? Well, well, I would say only when the word is properly received, only when the word begins to dwell in you, only when the word is uh, received by you in, in, a, in, an, in an adequate way, only then will this word, or the various functions of the word becomes, becomes uh, operative. Uh, all these things will work in your life. Um, so letting the word of Christ dwell in you is not just to read more Bible, which is good, by the way, or just to read more life studies, which is fantastic. This is our burden. But there's something more here, brothers and sisters. And I feel we need to progress, all of us. Um, and I somewhat feel there is a kind of a breakthrough that we all need in our lives uh, in these days uh, so that this word can um, um, have a place in us, have a place in us. Um, Now, um, you say, uh, you know, uh, how, how, how does this work, you know? Um, well, um, you have to, we have to firstly realize that the word of Christ, number one, is Christ, the living word himself. The word spoken by Christ, but the word eventually is Christ. You know, in John, you have, in the beginning was the word, right? That, that is Christ, the Logos. And this word, you know, became flesh. And, um, and, and that flesh, eventually through death and resurrection, became the spirit. And, um, um regardless the 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 the, uh, the word that we're talking about is actually Christ himself um to us and so when we come to the word and when we deal with the word and handle the word we have to come to the lord right otherwise we repeat the mistakes of the pharisees who search the scriptures, but would not come to me, you know, come to the Lord, that we may have life. So that word becomes just knowledge, doctrines, teachings, you know, uh, 
but it's not it's not Christ Himself as life to us. So we when we come to the word and handle the word, we have to come to it and handle it as a living person. And that is the Lord. Every time we come to the word, we have to come to the Lord simultaneously. Of course, when I say the word, I mean the written word without, you know, in our hands. All right. But this word is not just Christ. This word today is also the spirit. You know, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Um, eventually, the word and the spirit are identical. The word, Christ is the word and Christ is the spirit. Therefore, the spirit is the word and the word is the spirit. And this is very clear. You know, I just quoted John 6, 63, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And in Ephesians chapter 6, receive the word of the sword of the spirit. Which spirit? Which spirit is the word of God? So one says the words are spirit. And another place says the spirit is the word, showing very clearly that the word and the spirit are the same thing, two sides of the same thing. And so the, for us to really receive this word into us so that it can dwell within us, we have to be clear about this. So we have to know that there is the written word. Um, um, there's also this, what Brother Lee called it, applied word which is the spirit. Christ is the living word. The spirit is the applied word. And so today, when we come to the word, come to the, the, the written word, we are here to really what? To receive this Christ, to receive this Christ into us. And the way to receive this Christ into us is for us to what? For this written word out here to become the spirit word in us. You see? For this word out here, you know, in the Bible, to become the spirit that is infused into our being. Another place to prove that is in Timothy. All scripture is God, what? Breathed. Well, we know the breath of God is just the spirit of God. So again, here you see, you see, the word and the spirit are just related, interrelated. Um, um, okay, then the important thing is... Um, how to receive that word, all right? How to receive that word. Well, um, there are many ways to receive this word. We read it, we, um, uh, we pray it, especially, we pray it, we call it pray reading. Um, but I don't like to use that term because you have certain concept about the practice of prayer reading. I like to say praying the word, praying the word of God. Um, you know, in Colossians, singing the word of God, you know, singing the word of Christ. And in these days, we're very much talking even about musing the, on the word, musing on the word, that's in Psalms. Um, the Lord Jesus talk about eat, you know, masticate me, eat me. And eventually he said, the, the Jews thought he was talking about his, his physical flesh. 
And he said, the flesh profits nothing. My, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit. So when I say masticate or eat me, it is to eat my words. Eat my words, right? So, um, 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 we, we, we need to exercise, therefore, our spirit very much in a strong way. Indeed, we have to exercise our whole being when we come to the Word in this kind of a way so that this, uh, this uh, Word has a way to be received by us to come into us. Um, now, you may say, oh my goodness, this is like one, two, three, so basic. What are you talking to us about this? We know this stuff. Well, it's one thing to know this stuff. It's another to really daily, daily experience this. I, I, you know, we have the Holy Word for Morning Revival. We have so many riches, books, and all these things. But, but, but how much of that have become spirit to you? You see, how much of that has been received by you? How much of that have uh, been digested and assimilated by you? How much of that have become your and my constitution? That, that's another matter. That's another matter. And that requires another kind of exercise. Uh, a deeper exercise um, with 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 the word. Um, <clears throat> in the early days in the church life, uh, this matter of pray reading, you know, or pray reading, was uh, very prevailing, much more than today, much more than today. Uh, today we don't pray read that much in our meetings. Um, in those days, every meeting we pray read, prayer meeting, message meeting, whatever meeting we pray read the word. And uh, you know that song that I wrote that is quite sung quite much uh, on. Uh, uh, do come, oh, do come, let's the spirit and the bride. Okay, that's written by me when I was 19. 19 was the year when I came into the Lord's recovery. And how was that hymn written? I'll tell you how. I didn't just sit there and suddenly, whoa, that's a good tune. That's, that's great. No, no. You know what happened? In those days, you know, in the famous Eldon Hall, uh, the prayer meeting was just one big pray reading meeting. And we were pray reading parts of Revelation, the book of Revelation. And when I uh, was there, it happened that they were pray reading the end of Revelation, the church, uh, the last chapter, you know, about the, the throne, the river, you know, the last chapter. And my goodness, my goodness, in, I mean, the exercise of all the saints over the word of God by praying it, by, 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 by exercising our whole being and our spirit to pray, read, to touch the word, to eat the word, to, I, I cannot, I cannot even demonstrate now, but uh, my, my. I was in that meeting, in those meetings. And it's like fireworks in me. It's like fireworks within me. Whoa, I mean, the light, the, the life, the, uh, the, uh, the, the I, I, I don't know. And I tell you, it was right there. And then those words came to me. Even the tune came to me. I still remember that night when I penned that song. It was right after what... One such meeting, I hurry back to the apartment, you know, with the where the brothers were, and I just quickly wrote it. I mean, not the whole thing, but substantially. It was just 
pouring out of me. I don't know where it came from, the inspiration. But I'll, I'll tell you, my, my point is, it was not just, you know, some perfunctory pray reading, you know, we got to pray read, you know, you know, you just kind of amen and say a few amen and repeat the word. It's not like that. It was like intense. It was like powerful. It was like full exercise of the whole church. Goodness, goodness. And so many songs in those days, not just that one, were written as a result. You know, it says singing and making melody, you know, as a way to receive the word. That actually happened in those days. We did not have the kind of song writing as in those days anymore, since that time. I don't mean no songs or hymns were written. I mean, unlike those days, my every message, next meeting, there's a song. And uh, we were singing it. We were singing the word. And, and, oh, I tell you, the word of Christ were dwelling in us, received by us. We didn't have that much truth like today. No way. We definitely did not have the high peak of the divine revelation. We were just a crazy group of young people. But let me tell you, we receive the word. And th that word just operate within us in all these ways, you know, to cause us to deal with the world, to cause us to deal with sin, for to, to cause us to be absolute, to cause us to, to just supply us day after day, to strengthen us. Um, and all the things uh, that, that the, the, the functions of the word were real, real to us. And so our Christian life was, was just overcoming spontaneously. Our church life was just in the heavens. And it was a revival that occurred. And I'll tell you, that revival in Eldon Hall has a lot to do with the intake of the word through prayer. I can vouch for that vouch for that. And that is not miraculous. That is a principle. Today, if in our church life, we can recover or return to this strong kind of intake of the word, oh, I'll tell you, things will happen. Brothers and, and sisters, you know, you're working saints and Almost every day is a grind. Every day you have to struggle to survive and all the things out there and this, that, and the other. Um, we need this word. We need this word, the word of Christ to indwell us, to supply us, to, to, to build us up, to nourish us, to water us, to shine in us. I, I don't know. This... This word that is written would be translated into the rhema word, right? The logos would be translated into rhema and applied in our lives. That's the, the, the word coming into us. I think we need a recovery of prayer reading in a proper way. Not in a formula way, a formal way, but pray the word. Oh, my. Brothers, I, I feel you don't need to pray with three verses even. I tell you, too many times, way too many times, just praying one word, a phrase, a sentence, a verse. That's all. That's all. That is adequate to supply you the whole day. And during the day, you know what happened? We don't just end with a little morning revival over here. I tell you, during the day, you know, we chew the cud, you know, the, 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 the cow, right, with four stomachs. You are there during the day in your job, in your work. I mean, in, you, you, in, in school, you, you are just, that word is just living and operating and you ruminate, you bring it up again, you chew on it again. And, oh, I, I, I tell you, we were, we were strong. Young men, you were strong. You remember that verse in, in 1 John? Because of what? Say it. Because the word of God, what? Abides in you. I mean, 
I mean, there is a way for us not to have a weak Christian life, brothers. We can have a powerful, strong, robust, Christ, overcoming Christian life. By what? By having this word of God abide in us in this way. This, 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 this living word just, just indwelling us. Really, try it. <laughs> um, it's not even a matter you pray, Lord, help me, Lord, strengthen me. No, you just receive the word, receive the sword of the spirit by means of all prayer. You do this, really, you mean business. I mean, let's say you have only five minutes, 10 minutes in the morning, right? You don't have that much time. I tell you, if you become a keen prayer, were a, per, a person who is keen and practiced in this kind of prayer reading, I tell you, in 10 minutes, you can receive this indwelling word. You can receive this word of Christ in a, in a rich way. Let it dwell in you richly, not barely, not minimally, but richly. How many of us go through our daily life barely surviving, barely, you know, breathing at the end of the day? That should not be. That should not be. We can be filled with the Spirit, the Spirit Word. By what? By taking in the Word in this kind of a way. We, we need a revival, brothers uh, and sisters. In Irvine, we have, what, you know, a couple of hundred working saints. Uh, if we would do this ourselves personally, collectively, when we're together, really just take the word in and, and, and just... Paul here is saying, just... He didn't have any other exhortation. Let the word, let the word. This is, I, I say in the iterate, this is an aggressive let. This is not a passive let. Uh, you know, you sit there. No, you let. That word let means you receive. You aggressively receive. Receive the sword of the spirit. Which spirit is the word of God? By means of all prayer. When the word, the written word, becomes spirit, when logos become rhema, I tell you, the result is life. The result is light. The result is supply. The result is power. All manners of things of God, of God's grace, of the divine, uh, uh, of, in resurrection, in life, all those things will operate. The word of God is living and operative. We all know that verse. But how come it's not so living and not so operative in us, really, in our lives? Something is missing. It's not the word. It's the same word, same Bible. But the way we receive the word makes a difference. Now, I'd like to quickly talk about not only this, this way, this, this exercise way, this way of of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, letting the word dwell in us. Uh, um, um, and and I, I say, the, the, you know, in those days, we, we pray the word. We even, in our prayer, we, we, we proclaim the word. You know, we, we just speak the word as facts. We exercise our spirit of faith to declare the word in the meetings to one another. And that kind of declaration becomes a kind of mutual exhortation, mutual uh, teaching. My, I, this brother would stand up to just speaking the word in a living way because the word is operating in him. My, it just impacts you right away, strengthens you, exposes you, whatever. And it's just kind of going on like this. That church life is just living. Uh, I'm not panic, pining for good old days. I'm not just being nostalgic. But brothers, we are at a juncture, brothers, out of the pandemic. The Lord, I look to the Lord to uh, visit us and, and uh, visit the church and visit many of us to have a 
refresh, okay? To have a reset. And, and this is a basic place to start. This is a basic place to start. Now, I come to a further receiving of this word. The word, firstly, we receive by means of prayer, by means of singing, by means of musing, by means of ruminating, by means of just exercising our spirit, our whole being to do that, to do that. You know, you know, at lunch, you, you work, you just take a short lunch, you go out there and you don't just kind of, you know, start doing this and doing that and spending time on that. How about you go, go, you, you, you just spend some time to ruminate on the word, to, to, to pray over the word again. Why won't we do that? Your life would change. You'll be more spiritual. You'll be more living yourself. And you'll be more substantial because this is not just air. This is the word of God. Now, I'd like to go further and I'll finish tonight. And that is, I come to uh, 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 Matthew uh, 13, okay? Matthew 13, there's a main parable. And that parable is taught about a sower, right? What is that? That is a someone sowed, that is Christ, sowing the word of the kingdom. You remember that. So the Lord first spoke about the parable, then he gave some words to people, and then finally he interpreted his own, his own parable. So this parable is all about the, the word as seed, which in the end, this word of kingdom seed, word, it's just he himself as the seed sown into our hearts, into our being. Do you see this? So that word, that is that the, the, the word of God, the word of Christ, the word of the kingdom is what is intended to be sown into our hearts, to come into our hearts, to dwell in our hearts, and eventually to bear fruit in our hearts, okay? Now, the, the helpful thing in this parable is that it, the parable shows us how in certain cases that word fail to reside, fail to dwell. So here, here, in other words, the word is not properly received or adequately received, and so it doesn't bear fruit. All right? The first kind are the kind that uh, uh, is sown in the, in the, in the uh, place where there's a lot of uh, traffic, a lot of worldly traffic, a lot of things where the ground is hardened so that uh, it says... Uh, uh, and, and, and as a result, as even the seeds actually just drop on the ground, but never penetrated. They didn't even penetrate uh, into the, the hardened heart uh, by, this, by all this traffic. Um, and then secondly, and then eventually the, the, the evil one, the bird, just snatches away. And we know this happened. This happened even to us, right? You hear the word and... Before the meeting is over, the word is gone. <laughs> it got snatched away because your heart at that point is like a traffic place. It's a hardened place. It's not soft soil that is ready to receive the word. Then you have, secondly, the, the rocky uh, places. In this case, is the word penetrated, but it didn't get deep enough. It, it's, it's in a shallow place. Uh, and it couldn't get through the rocks. And the rocks are, you know, I mean, we all know these are uh, the, the hidden sins, the, uh, the, uh, the, the self, and, you know, all these kind of things that are rocky things within us. And these things have a way to, to um, um, 
uh, cause the world to stay in, in us superficially. So when the sun shines, there's some affliction, there's some persecution, there's some environmental uh, adversity, difficulty. That word has no root. That word has no root. That means it dries up. It dries up. It is non-functional. It's, it's not working. It's not living and operative. It could not withstand difficult times and challenges in our lives. Then, finally, the, the th third kind um, is the, the one that is God fell into among the thorns. And the thorns are what he says these thorns are the deceitfulness of riches, the, the anxiety of the age, and, and all this preventing the word to grow within us. And, and, and isn't that, don't we even have some experiences of this? Uh, I do. Um, and that is the word somehow. You read the word, you receive the word, you even pray the word. But somewhere along the line, that word just does not grow, does not bear fruit. There's some thorns there. The, 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 the deceit, the riches, the, uh, the, uh, what, the uh, anxiety of life and all these things frustrated the word from uh, eventually bearing fruit. Now, this is a good picture of how, what are some of the negative factors, the things that keep the word from eventually what? Making home, residing. Oh, today, brothers and sisters, we need a heart that ha that that gives every inch of ground to the word to inhabit. And to do this, listen. To do this, we have to deal with the word that is we receive. And that is spoken to us. By what? By dealing with our own heart. Now, here I want to also give you my other uh, testimony in those days, in the, in the late 60s and when I came into the church life. Uh, this is just my own little testimony uh, about, about this, these things. So uh, those days, Brother Lee would give three messages a week a week, what do you call informal training? I mean, that word is just like, oh my goodness, it's like Niagara Falls, right? The word, and I was in, I was a sophomore in college, but I, I would like to testify to you in those days, my heart was just, I gave the Lord as many inches as I could in my heart that I knew how to do. Of course, in those days, I am single and, you know, what problems did I have? Well, I have my share of problems, you know, I still have myself, I still have sins, I have to have the world. Okay, so the word come, the word was spoken. And I can testify to you, if you are in a right position, if you are a open vessel, if you are have nothing between you and the Lord, which we all exercise to do very much in those days, the word will, will come through. So in a meeting, inevitably, there would be one or two things of the word that just penetrated. Now, brothers and sisters, this is important. I tell you, don't let that word go. I'm not talking about you taking notes on every point, okay? I'm talking about suddenly a word became alive. A word jump out of the page. A word just shine on you. A word that is suddenly exposes something in you. Not that pleasant. A word that just uh, does something. Okay, so what I did in those days, that was my practice. After the message is done, 
we had long meetings in those days after the message was done. I, you know, in 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 uh, in in the Gospels, it say after the angel spoke to Mary, it says Mary hit those words in her heart. That means he didn't let he didn't let it go. He didn't let it go. So I went home. I'm in the brother's house. People go to sleep. I just stay. I, you know, my little testimony. I uh, there's a tiny little. It's not even a pool. It's just a little thing. You know, uh, jacuzzi or whatever in, in this apartment complex. And um, I just circled that pool. I remember it even tonight. Doing what? Regurgitating, ruminating, reflecting on the word that I hit in my heart that probably may not have hit, touched anyone, but it touched me. That means it was the Lord speaking to me. And before I forget that word, before I go to sleep, I dealt with the Lord with that word. In other words, I dealt with the word. I pray with that word. I open to the Lord. And I'll tell you, that word is living and operative. Cutting asunder, dividing soul from spirit, exposing the intents of my heart, exposing the self, exposing my sin, exposing the world. I tell you, that word, that word, you know, it was a time when that word, uh, that it was a time that I was doing something to deal with the wayside traffic, to deal with those rocks huh, in me, to deal with those thorns that are in me. And I'll tell you, that's the way I live in those days. And I can only uh, testify that because of that kind of exercise, of course, it's the Lord's mercy. It's not me. It's the Lord's mercy that I even practice that. That the word have a way, had a way in my heart to bear fruit. To bear fruit in my life. <clears throat> That practice continued with me later on. You know, Brother Lee started the life studies and all of this. That has still been my practice. I leave the hall, leave the meeting, and I begin to, while the word is fresh, you know, and living, I begin to deal with my heart. The result that this word finds root. This word can grow, and this word bears fruit. And this word found a place to live in me. It became, that word became an abiding word. Abide in me, my words will abide in you. Do you see this? It says first, abide in me, and I will abide in you. So do you see, when the Lord's words have a way to abide in us, that is tantamount to him abiding in us. When the word have find ground and place and a residence in your heart, that's when the Lord is making home in your heart. But that requires a deeper receiving of the word, a deeper dealing with the word, a deeper, um, a richer handling of this word. And so I stop here. Uh, and there, there's, a, there's, of course, a lot to this matter. Um, I, I uh, you know, Paul says when he left the elders in Ephesus at the seashore, Last time he saw him, he said, I commit you 
to the word of his grace. Well, friends, it says, all I can do is commit you to the Lord's, not only to the Lord, Paul says, to the word of his grace. I commit all of us to the Lord's word. I tell you, God gave us two gifts that are actually eventually one. Number one, the Holy Spirit, the greatest gift, which is really he himself, as the unique blessing of the New Testament in his economy. Number two, he gave us his holy word. And this is the word that explains himself, that, that reveals himself, that of all who he is and all the mysteries um, in the in the divine and mystical realm. This word opens his heart to us. This word, have, when, 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 when the spirit and the word, you know, the spirit eventually becomes the indwelling spirit to indwell our heart and our whole being. The word also have to indu is the indwelling word to indwell our heart. When our heart, which is our person, is re have received the spirit and received the word in an indwelling way, I tell you, dear saints, we are living the normal Christian life. And so many wonderful things will happen. The church life, I mean, uh, our growth in life, our our um, um, uh, our service to the Lord, our meeting life. I tell you, this will transform our meeting life because if you are like this, every time you come to the meeting, you have something to minister. You have something to say, something to overflow that will minister Christ. You see, uh, the gospel life, uh, the, the shepherding life and in 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 every way in every way so i stop here again this is just my <laughs> talk to us tonight it is immensely practicable amen <clears throat> amen thank you brother menorah amen well saints i really appreciate this